Today we are going to meditate on one of the things Jesus carried as he journeyed to the cross, a seamless robe. In John chapter 19 we read, When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, They divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Jesus carried a seamless robe. This garment must have been crafted with some skill. It was not like a mass-produced garment. Things that are crafted have lasting value. Laundered and hung out to dry, it drifted in the breeze. But there was no breeze that day. The air seemed to hang in the sky like a great leaden weight. Dogs barked. Somewhere a fire crackled. His sweat and blood stained the cloth. It clung to him and where he had been lashed, the fibres of the material stuck to the congealing wounds. Maybe some of the edges were fraying. Something was unravelling, becoming undone. On another day, someone reached out to touch the hem of his garment. Who touched me? said Jesus. Even as the crowd pushed around him, he knew that power had gone out of him. He could discern each touch. Each person was special to Jesus. The woman was healed. But she also encountered Jesus. He called her out from the crowd, this ritually unclean woman. He really saw her, loved her, and healed her. But on that road to the cross, rough hands were upon him. No one dies with their clothes on. And if it was, wasn't so lovely, they would have torn it from him. But it was too comely, too costly. So suddenly they were gentle. This thing could make them a few pounds or keep them warm, or spruce them up, or give them something to brag about. They gave this robe a dignity they didn't give to him. For he was a thing despised and a thing rejected. They exposed him, smirked at him, and nailed him to a cross. Then, at the foot of the cross, they spun their dice for this garment to see which one of them would have it, this seamless robe, this lasting uncovering. And he carried the seamless purposes of God. That was what he was carrying at this moment. Though exhaustion and terror and the raw, uncomplicated torment of dying meant that he did not need to know he was carrying it. He just had to do it.
He arrived at a point where there were no choices left, except the one to utter gentle words of forgiveness to those who ducked and dealt, for they too were being woven into the tapestry of God's story. A seamless purpose, his birth, his life, the slow unfolding of vocation, the chill awakening of baptism, the pleading in the garden for another way, and now this, his dying, all part of an unfolding hope and glory that was present in the heart of God before the world was made. Now planted in his heart, turning slowly to completion. The hour of reckoning. And as the strange, eclipsing darkness gathers, the beckoning of a new dawn, a new heaven and a new earth, God's work of redeeming planted in our hearts. Those words of forgiveness spoken to us. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Sing.